Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily, where our job is to keep you up to speed on the most important developments in the global automotive industry. And speaking of that global industry, Merrill Lynch reports that sales of light vehicles hit 84.4 million units last year, up 4.5% from the year before. That is a lot of vehicles and doesn't even include medium or heavy duty trucks or buses. Merrill Lynch is forecasting that global light vehicle sales will hit 89.3 million vehicles this year. That's an increase of nearly 5 million vehicles or the equivalent of bringing nearly 20 new assembly plants online. At that rate, global production should hit 100 million by 2017. But in the U.S., fewer and fewer of those vehicles are made by UAW workers. Bloomberg reports that last year, 54% of cars and trucks produced in the U.S. were made by the UAW, almost 6 million vehicles. But only 15 years ago, that number was 86%. The UAW is losing market share as more transplants build more cars in the U.S. without union labor. Acura is a luxury brand going nowhere. It put one of the biggest duds ever to hit the showrooms in its lineup, the ZDX, and the brand really only has two successful models in its hands, the MDX and RDX. To turn that around, Honda has created what it calls the Acura Business Planning Office, which will be led by Eric Berkman, currently the president of Honda R&D Americas. No word yet on how this is going to make things better at Acura, but clearly Honda desperately needs to try something different. Back in May of last year, EV startup Coda filed for bankruptcy, but not long after, it announced it would continue to sell its all-electric sedan on its website. Now it's turning to eBay to sell off what's left in inventory. The most recent car went for only $14,000, well be below its reserve price. The car originally listed for about $45,000, but then dropped to $37,000. I have to say that in test driving the car, it drove surprisingly well, but that was an awful lot of money to ask for, for an outdated Mitsubishi design sourced out of China. Speaking of EVs, sales picked up smartly in the fourth quarter in the U.S. last year. You might be surprised to learn that Atlanta had the largest growth, 52%, which is significantly higher than second place Washington, D.C., with 21% growth. Portland, Los Angeles, the Bay Area, San Diego, Chicago, Seattle, Miami, and Detroit are the fastest growing EV markets in the U.S., but L.A. led the list in sales with over 5,000 EVs sold. Last week, we showed you Peugeot's new city car, the 108. Now it's Citroen's turn to show off its version of the car called the C1. The two are very similar, but with noticeable differences in the front and rear fascias. Now we've got to say that we like the styling on the 108 a whole lot better. The C1 is a very fussy design. One other change is that the C1 will only be available with two engine options as opposed to the 108's four. It comes with either a one liter or a 1.2 liter three cylinder engine. The five speed manual and automatic transmissions will remain the same. The C1 takes its bow in Geneva along with the 108. Hey, don't forget to join us Thursday night for AutoLine After Hours. Our guest will be Elaine Bannon, the chief engineer on the new Lincoln Navigator. So while you chief engineers out there who want to know what Lincoln's doing with its full-size SUV, here's your chance to learn about it firsthand. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. And now it's time for some of your feedback. D-Cars heard my comment on why we should get off OPEC oil and says, we, through Exxon and BP, etc., buy oil on the open market at the lowest price from OPEC and 
everyone else who sells the commodity via this open market. Thus, why do we care who provides the commodity? Well, we care because of the two oil shocks we went through, which could always happen again. Plus, the U.S. sure spends a lot of money keeping the fifth fleet in the Persian Gulf. Think about the geopolitical implications. If we didn't have to keep the Straits of Hormuz open, it would free up an entire carrier group, just as the Pentagon wants to slash military spending. George Ricci had this to say, You talked about cafe standards reducing our oil needs by 2 million barrels, but as a longtime listener, I heard you say those standards will be revisited and might be reduced. The best way to reduce our oil needs is with cellulosic ethanol made from garbage. What does every city in America have? Per capita, we probably generate more garbage than anyone else in the world. Charge, you're right. And I too was a big proponent of cellulosic ethanol made from garbage, but where is it? No one's making the kind of ethanol in the quantities we need. M360 wants to know, would one of the ALD sponsors, he means Auto Line Dailies, Dow Betamate structural adhesives possibly have anything to do with the adhesives used in the all new aluminum Ford F-150 pickup truck? M360, I would not be surprised if Dow is involved with that truck. Dow is not the only supplier of structural adhesives, but it's one of the big ones. And you know, we're starting to see a lot more of these adhesives being used in cars. Not only do they provide a way to join different types of materials together quite efficiently, they provide more design flexibility because you don't have to leave room for welding ro robots to maneuver into the body. Bob Smith does not agree with what we reported in the latest Autoline Garage. I'm not buying the replace all tires at once on a four or all wheel drive vehicle. I've owned several such vehicles and have never had an issue with replacing a damaged tire. I find it hard to believe that the very minor difference in the size of a tire wouldn't be accounted for in the design of the four wheel drive system. Bob, all we're doing is reporting what Audi and Subaru, to name two of them, recommend with their all wheel drive systems. It might be hard to believe that you have to replace all four tires even if you blow out only one of them, but that is what the manufacturers recommend. Ken Newton notes that many of the newly designed cars have styled ridges running over the hood from inboard of the headlights to the A-pillar. What is this about? Styling, aerodynamics, pedestrian safety, or question mark, question mark? I find these ridges block the close-up view over the forward side of the hood, making it hard to see curbs or anything close to the front of the car. Well, Ken, it is mostly about pedestrian protection. Automakers have to raise the hood to provide more crush space in case a pedestrian's head hits the hood. And the stylists seem to have hit on those raised ridges as a look that they like. Hey, thanks for all your comments and letters. We sure like going through them all, at least when they're part of a good discussion. We recently kicked someone out of the comments section when he seemed more interested in trading insults than in talking about cars and the industry. And I want to thank the rest of you for keeping that section interesting and courteous. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.